we are well on our way to having a working battleship game like the one behind me. What we're focusing on now is fine tuning the selection of the tiles and making sure when we flip turns that you would see either the your guesses or you would see your ships and where the enemy hit. We also want to add some script to that fire. Let's make it flip colors and uh, loop through them so it looks like, you know, it's actually kind of animated fire. Imagine. Code and assets are in the description. Game is behind me. Let's get going. Let's start with reviewing what we have and a bit of debugging and essence and keep building out. Let's see. And wait a minute. Oh, we need to actually, so we're not going to define these within start. So we do need to go ahead and give them an empty list. So new. There we are. And we're going to do the exact same thing for fire. So I'm just going to do a uh, control C and paste it here. Great. And oh, so that should take care of that. Let's make sure our turns are going to be ending properly. Yeah, invoke end player turn, invoke end enemy turn. So within here, this is looking good, but remember that the enemy script can also have an impact, and I believe... Missile hit, we need an intern right here. So let's go ahead and do invoke. Now invokes can only be used on methods within the class. So I'm gonna invoke end turn and I'm gonna create this method in just a second. That's really just gonna call uh, the method within the, uh, the game manager. Um, so the enemy script, we can get the game manager as well, because it will be an object. There we are. Ooh, ah. Okay, game manager. Get component, the game manager script, and then we're going to call the... Let's make sure these are public and enemy turn is private. So we want that public. And let's save to make sure it's public. Let's go back over here and now let's do end enemy turn. There we are. Boom. And now we can end the term here. We're also going to need to end it. So this will end the term. We're going to need a function to delay and end. And so for this method, it's going to delay the end, but it's also going to be updating the potential hits list that we created when we're seeking out tiles around the current hits for the enemy. And it will update that by removing misses from that list so the enemy can get closer and closer each time. Like a real human would, their guesses will get better as they miss the ship. So what's happening here is I'm saying if the potential, so current hits zero is greater than miss. So if our current hit is greater than that number that we currently hit, right? So our current hit might be tile 20 if or tile 17, we'll say. If 17 is greater than the miss, we want to be aware of this. And so we're going to remove the potential is less than, if potential is less than miss, potential hits remove potential. So we're going to get rid of anything that is less. So for each item in the list, anything that is less than the miss. However, if it's greater, if potential is greater than, then what are we going to do? 
well, then we're going to get rid of anything that is above. It's eliminating all those tiles that we now know cannot possibly be the other locations of the ship. And then we're going to use invoke again. And boom. Save all that. I had to game manager, make sure we have this all updated. Looks good. Let's save all that. And now that we have that, let's actually go to enemy script because we can finally update this else that we left empty. And this is what's going to occur if we collide with something and it's not a ship, it's a tile. Because if it's a tile, we missed and we want to update the enemy potential hits list. So we're doing that with our pause and inf method or function, the one we just wrote. Perfect. Now let's head to game manager. Let's go ahead now and get this a bit more organized. So we have the HUD, right? And we have objects and all of that will appear in the inspector in Unity. I just kind of want to clean it up a bit and continue making it more usable. For instance, why don't we have one of these? I'm going to copy and paste this for ships. So I'll just call this ships and well, everything related to the ships can go into that, all the public stuff. And I would include, let's see, tiles. Um, ships go on the tiles, might as well put that in here as well. And we'll have to double check the inspector to make sure we put these things back. The enemy script, we can go ahead and place that with our ships because it's kind of. Okay, and then ships, public, tiles, enemy script, that's all looking good. I'm going to move that up just so it's near the ships. Okay. And enemy ships is private, so we won't need to worry about that. Fires is going to be private, and the ship counts are also private. This is fine. That list is okay. Let's go ahead to keep it organized. Again, I'm just kind of putting the ship stuff up here. And let's do enemy ships as well, just up here. Makes the variables easier to read. Ship index, I guess I can place that up here. Kind of tidying things up. It makes it more usable in the end and readable. All right, lists, fires, that's fine. That's also great. Set up complete our booleans. Yeah. All right, that's looking better. Now let's go ahead and put an on-click listener for our replay button. No, we haven't added it yet, but I mean, it will be coming soon. So boom and replay BTN. We did add it at the top, right? But we'll add it to the interface in a moment. And I'll just call the function for this replay clicked. Simple enough because we already have it way, way, way down here. Replay clicked is set to go. All right, let's go ahead too and work on the fire script. So I'm going to save all this zoop, and whoop and oh, there's all my tiles. Let's go ahead and we already created that script, but we haven't added anything to it. Did I move it in here? I did. Oh. And so this is actually going to be super simple script wise, because all it's going to be doing is enabling us to manipulate, to change the colors of the game object, of the, well, of the fire game object. And the reason we do that is it makes it look more realistic. It, it gives it a slight appearance of moving. I think it's kind of fun, so I like it. All right, let's see. So what we'll need is a few variables. We don't need start, but I'll use this because I'm going to do a fixed update. The nice thing about fixed update is we know it occurs regularly, whereas update occurs as fast and as constantly as possible. So and I'm just going to call this red fire and these will be. Well, we're going to use the materials. So. These are the pieces of the fire game object 
because I created it using three different pieces. I duplicated a small flamey looking thing and stacked them on top of each other, which allows us to do this, manipulate each color independently, giving it a kind of flickering appearance and count. Count is just to keep track of how fast we're changing it. It's kind of a crude way and it works perfect. So. If counts greater than 30, we could also have just used a for loop. All right, but if count fire, I missed our uh, list. We need a list for our colors. And these are the colors I was liking, red, yellow, and this I found to be an orangish color. Obviously, choose any color you would like. That should do it. And then I'm gonna have them be somewhat randomized here. So we're gonna add the color red, and then I'm gonna do an So however many colors are in there, boom. Now what I will do is, well, let me walk through it. I'm going to set the color, then I'm going to remove the color I just chose, so on and so forth. And keep in mind, we already have added several colors. So it's very likely with how I'm going to do this that it's usually different colors, but it's often two red components, one yellow, and that's part of what gives it its flickering appearance. And then we're gonna remove the color it just chose. And then I'm gonna use random again, literally doing this identical action. So I'm just gonna copy it without the int so we don't read a, attempt to redeclare it. And I'll set the orange part of the fire, or would I label the orange part? Underscore color. That new random number that just happened for us, and boom. And then we're gonna remove that. And then what I did this time is, since it's always gonna be changing, I just made the yellow fire always be whatever is currently at zero of our list. Now, if you always want it to be red, orange, and yellow, what you would do is clear the list after each time and then at the top you of our if, you would repopulate it with just those three colors, limiting it to only choosing those three, as opposed to starting it with three colors like I have here. I just like the randomness it adds. And then now that I have those established, I'm gonna go ahead and set the fires colors list. And then I want to reset count to zero. And I want to iterate count down here. See how this looks. And if you did want to limit the randomness, I mean, I can even do it. You can just do fire. And it won't be that random after the first. So fire colors, so our list. Yeah, and all we would do is a clear on it to make sure everything was cleaned out of there. Actually, I can put it here. I would clear it and then I'm going to reestablish what is inside of the list. Boom. Great. That's looking awesome. Save all that. And let's go ahead and look. I know there's some mechanisms with our turn feature um, that might not be up and running, but let's see where we are at. And even the instantiation of the fire. So next, 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 next. Hmm, that's something fun. We got to make sure it doesn't let us do that with that ship over, but let's keep going here. Ah, so we got a few bugs right here. Ah, let's see. Okay, let's take a look at these. Uh, of course, tile's not tagged yet, so that one's easy enough. 
I'm going to select these. I thought I did this, but I'll hold shift click and then. No, oh, it doesn't even. OK, let me go ahead and add tile. Save. Let me add ship as well while I'm here because I'm going to want that. All right. So now I'll click. Go all the way up, hold and do tile. There we are. And now for the ships, joop, to joop, not the dock. Ships, tag, ship. Okay. Now what else is this saying? Object reference not set. Well, we'll take a look at the game manager real quick. I did move things around. What's uh, the replay button is not player ship text is not got it. So let's take a look at the HUD. And uh, player ship count here, enemy ship count. All right, so grab enemy ship count and oh, let me not. Okay, manage. Let me grab enemy ship count and drop enemy ship count, player ship count, and drop. I need my fire prefab and my dock prefab. Prefab, fire. Prefab. Oh, the doc's not a prefab. This is just because I moved that stuff around to organize it. I have populated this previously. Let's go ahead and add the replay button. I'm not entirely sure what that's going to look like. I'll probably just duplicate my next button right now. Duplicate. Let's take a look. And I'm not sure that I've hidden it yet, so that's fine, though. I want it here for now. Replay. BTN and then and this will be of course what would pop when they lose cool replay all right now we can put that into our game manager as well that's all populated all right let's see what errors we get so right now did we let me take a look. Ah, so we have to reset the size. So that's five. And then how big is this ship? It is four because that's how what we're checking for. We're checking that it is in contact with the correct amount of tiles. This is three. The cruisers also three and the destroyer, which I always thought was strange, is actually two, even though it's the smallest. There we are. And let's go ahead and rotate. And let's test the perfect. It's not letting us. There we are. Drop that there. Flip that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, it's not in contact. Boom. And we can also control the rotation, of course, if we would like. Oh, now it's going to give us problems. Let's see. There we are. Guess an enemy tile. Looking good. Quapow. Missed. Enemy's turn. And this is where I was expecting the issue. Let's double check here. The variable enemy missile prefab of the enemy has not been assigned. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So it has not enemy missile prefab. And then we should give this the game manager. I'm going to save all that while I'm at it. All right, let's try again. There we are. Guess an enemy tile. Sure, I'll guess here. Oh, and we got fire. Oh, whoa. The enemy gets to go way too many times. This is not ideal. You can see the guessing pattern, though. That's kind of cool. Uh, of course, that threw an exception. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at why our enemy turn is not ending. Clear this off. Zoop. Actually, let's go ahead and pause here. We can take care of that exception in the next video. And then we have a few other items to polish off, some of the cosmetics, and then we'll have an awesome, awesome, awesome game to play and show off. We're just about there. I'm excited to get this completed. Onward.